Welcome to the Fabulous Fistas and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta. Today we're going into the operating room as Dr. Jeffrey Taylor operates on my eye. Now for some of you, this might be a little queasy, so you might want to just kind of be careful how you watch it. It's not that bad. There's no big blood or anything like that, but it's going to be interesting as I had cataract surgery. And for those of you who are anticipating it, it might be interesting for you to watch, or if you've already had it, you might want to see what happened. So you stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace. Keep moving and never stop. Just go. Hey, go with what you got. Welcome back. I'm Jim Pollard, your co-host with my wife, Janetta. Our guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Taylor, ophthalmologist with the Ophthalmology Group in Paducah, Kentucky. We're going to take you into the operating room in a little while, but right now we just want you to uh, meet our guest and as we talk with him for just a few minutes, and then we're going to go in the operating room. Dr. Taylor, good to have you with us today. Thank you. This uh, was interesting for us and exciting for our camera crew. Is this the first time that's ever happened with you? Uh, yeah. We, we videotape a lot of our surgeries just for people to take home with them, but no one's ever had a camera crew in the operating room with us before. It's just been like a fixed yeah. thing of, of, the, of the surgery itself. Yeah, exactly. But you can, uh, anybody who has eye surgery down there at the eye center, is that what you call it? Uh, the eye surgery center, yeah. Yeah, they, they can go in this little room and watch it most of the time. Yeah, anybody can do that, and anybody that has surgery, they can bring a tape in, because we videotape every surgery, so they can bring a tape in and we'll videotape it and send it home Except with them. Except when the camera's broken. Except like when the camera's broken, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has been once before. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, this was quite interesting for me. It was my first, and of course, she had already had two prior to my one, and so it was uh, interesting that mine had to come as fast as it did after my other surgery, but it did, and because of the cataract. But it's uh, been an interesting process just to go through the, the different things and see the different things. Now, I will tell the audience that I have not seen this tape either. We both will be viewing it together for the first time, as well as Dr. Taylor for the first time. But uh, Janetta watched some of it through the, through the other eyes. But we're going to talk about the different things so that you can see. I was never hesitant about having it done. Uh, and I think part of it was because of her success. And, and as we have talked uh, in uh, previous shows, this has gotten to be pretty uh, uh, a regular thing handed. I mean, it's not, it's, it's safe, it's effective, and then the implantation of the lens has really improved, hasn't it? That's, yeah, that's true. Um, we, it's gotten to be fairly routine. We try not to call it routine because it still is surgery and there's always a chance for complications, but you know the the very the bad complications that are sight threatening like uh, a significant bleed in the eye and infection are all you know greatly reduced from what they used to be and less than one in a thousand for any of those complications so it's a very safe surgery these days but it's also something almost everybody has to have sometime if you if you grow old yeah that's that's what i tell people it's some people think that cataracts are a disease but they're actually just a kind of a normal aging change and if you live long enough you will develop a cataract so it's, it's going to happen. Well, and, and we've been watching several things talk about the longevity of people today. And, and it's always interesting as you get our age, I'm 69, <clears throat> to see the improvements. They were talking uh, this morning, I guess it was, about Alzheimer's and the improvements that they're making with that. And they're saying, it was interesting that they're saying within several years, and, and several is a relative term, but they were five to 10 years they might have a preventative uh, cure. Then that's what they're, that's what, so that's what they're looking for in Alzheimer's disease is to prevent it. Yeah. And not, not to cure it, but looking. to prevent it, you know. Uh, that, that they, they say it's a better route to prevent it than it is to cure it. Yeah. And so I guess that's uh, some of the things that's happening. And I saw where in uh, Miami, the University of Miami, which is a big medical center also, that, and it's a big eye, eye center down there too. Very big eye center. Yeah, I remember that from having living there, but I think it's like four countries, the doctors in diabetes sur uh, research are combining with the University of Miami to combine all of their information over the next several years to look for a cure in diabetes. So I guess if we, if we live long enough and in the future there's going to be cures for, the problem is 
we're finding other diseases, isn't it? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> it's very true. And, and so that's that's one of the things I guess that happens. Well, as we as we view the the surgery and the procedure which we're going to get into in just just a minute now, we need uh, we'll be talking about the different procedures. I'll be watching, maybe asking questions, but you'll be telling us what's going on. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Let's just uh, let's roll in the tape now and see what's happening. <clears throat> Well, I can talk about that. I know what that is. That's the girl asking all the questions. <laughs> I, I, I miss out on this part of it. But they're, uh, they're pretty thorough yeah. on, on their questions and everything, and, and it's, uh, it's interesting. But this, this is the front office, and this is the beginning. You can tell I'm real enthused. And now they're taking me back. You never see any of this, do you? I don't see any of this. Not at all. Yeah. I'm always back in the in the very back. But they're taking us in there. They keep me working the whole time there. Well, yeah, because you're you're operating on one while they're prepping me yeah. in, in here. Yeah, they were doing that. How many do you usually do a day? Or um, on an average day between probably about ten to fourteen. Wow. That, that many. Yeah. Now, is that all day long or just, no, just part of the day? No. Start it. Usually, I'll do a few lasers in the morning before I start surgery. Two or three lasers. And then I'll start doing cataract surgery at about eight and be done with, you know, if I do, if I do twelve, I'd probably be done by about one thirty or two o'clock. Wow. Well, I didn't know you did the lasers too. Yeah. Is is that uh, what do they call that? LASIK. 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 Um, usually, if we're doing LASIK, it's in the afternoon after the cataracts. Before cataract surgery in the morning, we'll do um, lasers to clear up some of the scar tissue that can form on the back of the lens oh, okay. after cataract surgery. Um, lasers for glaucoma and things like that. Oh, so that's what you're doing. You're not doing it for LASIK. No, the LASIK will be after. Usually, we'll do it after the cataract surgery in the afternoons. Oh, okay. Do you do that too? I'm just getting ready to get started doing LASIK. Yeah, I've trained on it. I just haven't done any of it here. Keeps it low below 90. Oh, is that what he said? Making sure her eyes are clean. Yeah. I might ought to say that the interesting thing about this was not only did they dress me in the bonnet and everything, but they did the camera crew also. <laughs> <laughs> they had on their uh, their white suits and their and their bonnets and everything. Oh. Yeah, my staff had a great time with this. Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, that's good. Some of them didn't want to be on camera. Do an EKG on everybody, right? Yep, everyone has an EKG. You know what we're gonna do, if they've already had one at another, at a hospital recently, mm -hmm. we'll use that one. But if they haven't had one within about three months, they'll have to have another one. A lot of this is just is safety precautions. Even though we're not putting people under general anesthesia, um, anytime you use anesthetics and, and slow people's resp respiratory rate down, things like that, mm -hmm. you, you just better to be cautious. Right. I think they're rolling me back yeah. to your venue now. Yeah. It's a small operating room, isn't it? Um, it's, yeah, it's not bad, actually. Um, some of the operating rooms uh, that I worked at at University of Kentucky, where I trained, were actually even smaller than this. This one, it's fairly small, but it has to, we have a fair amount of room in there for all this equipment that we roll in and out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've worked in a lot of operating rooms where they didn't have all this equipment where they were just doing kind of open surgeries and all they had mm -hmm. was just a, a few tables or to, to bring in there but we have so much equipment that we have to bring in that they have to have a little bit of room in there to move around. So you actually bring the equipment doesn't stay in there then? Uh, it does but we move different things in for different surgeries. Um, one of my partners Dr. Baker does retina surgery out yeah. there and he uses different equipment than we do. Yeah he's, he's did yeah, retina surgery you know on him. So what are they they're opening up my eye? So now oh. they've they've gone gone ahead and they've they've cleaned the eye up. They've just kind of sterilized the whole area around the eye, and they've put a a speculum in there to open the eyelids to hold them open. I see. I don't remember any of that. No, you've they kind of made you sleepy by that point. Now yeah. I brought the microscope in, and I'm just kind of focusing it, trying to get it nice and centered on there. At this point, I have made a. This instrument lets me make a I've made a small incision in the eye, about a millimeter, and I've injected some really thick fluid into the eye to expand the eye. 
to keep it from flattening whenever we go inside the eye and do things because the, the thin fluid that's like water will just kind of come out and make the eye collapse. This really thick fluid goes in there and it keeps the eye expanded. Now at this point, I've already torn a little hole in the, the front surface of the cataract and I'm injecting a fluid to loosen the whole cataract up from the, the, the capsule that contains it. And you can maybe even see this little wave of fluid go behind it. Do you see that it's go across? That. Mm -hmm. Now when that wave of fluid goes across there, that loosens all the attachments from the cataract to the capsule. So that was actually between the cataract and the eye then? Uh, between the cataract and the capsule that's containing okay. the cataract. It's a okay. very thin, in the order of you know, hundreds of a millimeter thick. And now what I do is when I get the, the attachments loose, you'll see that I, I'll dig that little cannula into the, the substance of the cataract and actually spin it. And that tells me that it's free. Once I can spin it, that tells me I can move it like I need to to, to do what I need to do during the surgery. I see you spun it thin, didn't you? Yeah, you'll see. I'll, I'll actually try and move it a, a, almost between 90 and 180 degrees to make sure I'm really convinced that it's free. It might be well to note that even though that's full screen, how small those instruments are. Oh, those, you can, you could not even tell that the little bend on that cannula is there without the microscope. This is the main instrument that uses the ultrasound. So now I've, I've convinced myself that it's completely free and spinning. And so it's now the, the, the substance of the cataract is not attached to the capsule that contains it anymore. Now this instrument is the, the main instrument that removes the cataract. It's called phacal emulsification, which uses a really high frequency ultrasound to vibrate and it, it sort of removes it by acting like a jackhammer. It, it vibrates at 30,000 hertz. So 30,000 times per, that's per second or per minute, I'm trying to remember now. But it, it, 30, Rick's, in, Rick's in the back hollering the answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, this thing oscillates at just a remarkable speed and it acts like a miniature jackhammer. It just kind of breaks the cataract apart. As it's doing that, there's fluid coming out the little side ports that you may be able to see. And you can kind of see that where it dips in at the side on that blue plastic. That's where the fluid's coming out. And that little ultrasound vibration is breaking the cataract up and pulling the pieces that's breaking up into the tip. And it, sucks them in through this hose and kind of deposits them back in the machine. And what I will do is I will break the cataract up, or I'm kind of grooving it into quadrants at this point to try and remove individual pieces because the capsule is just not big enough to take the whole thing on at once the way we do it now. Sounds exciting to know you have a jackhammer on our yeah, eyes. Yeah, very <laughs> miniature jackhammer. I tell people this is the most fun thing I do. I, this surgery is the fun part of the job. I love to operate. I think everybody that goes into this really does. That's what draws them into it is all the, the, the great technology that we get to use to do this. So now I'm making this first groove and I'm putting the two instruments down there and I'm going to crack this whole thing in half. You can see me as I I put the two instruments down at the bottom and I'm actually splitting the, the lens in half. Now that's the actual lens in the eye? That is the actual cataract or what it's your, your natural lens when you're younger and as, as it hardens and thickens it becomes a cataract. Oh. And so um, now I've got it split in half completely and now I'm going to take the two halves and split them into halves. All right, we're gonna take a break here in just a minute and we're going to uh, have a PSA that we want our audience to pay attention to and as we do that, then we're gonna come back and talk about some more. So you stay tuned and we'll be right back. America's veterans have come from all walks of life and every corner of the nation to bravely serve in protecting our way of life. It is the privilege of VA to return that service with the excellent health care that our veterans have earned. 
And it is the nurses of VA, men and women of all backgrounds, who help to make that quality health care possible by providing a vital service to the community, by sharing ideas in a supportive, professional environment, by giving the best of themselves every day, and by advancing to the top of their field. But most of all, by providing excellent and direct care to every one of their patients. We are the nurses of VA. VA Nursing, a career in caring. For more information, contact VACareers.com. Welcome back. I'm Jim Pollard, your host, with my wife, Janetta, as our co-host, and our guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Taylor, as we're looking at and talking about my cataract eye surgery. Happened uh, a couple of months ago, but it's something that we thought some of you might be interested in seeing or hearing about, because as Dr. Taylor says, if you live long enough, you're going to have to have it done. And so if you haven't had it done, this is what you got to look forward to. If you have, now you can look back and say, I went through that, been there, done that. Uh, as we as we start in our second, I just before we start rolling the tape again, Dr. Tate, tell us about that life scene that we saw with the instrument there. So there's a a screen that it's what we use to control the settings of uh, the, the machine that we're actually using, the ultrasound, the the vacuum, and all that. So um, it's got all these different parameters that we can change on it. We it, depending on how hard the the cataract is, we can increase the ultrasound power. Uh, and make the the machine vibrate at a faster speed so it the the as I described it as a miniature jackhammer so it, it breaks a thicker cataract up a little easier um, we can also increase the power of the aspiration to try and pull things uh, the little pieces that we're breaking up into the machine faster and we can also adjust the fluid rate so it more fluid flows into the eye to help cool the eye it's interesting. Now, in this segment, we're also going to see the implantation of the lens. How, give me the size of that lens again. The size, most of them are about a six millimeter optic. They're, they kind of vary a little bit, but that's kind of the average size. So the center of it is about six millimeters across. All right, let's look at it. We're at it again now. Tell us what, what are you doing there? You're making room for the lens? or So now I'm still taking the, the cataract itself out. So I'm I've, I've got it cracked completely in half and now I've gone and I've broken one of the halves up into quarters and I'm now going to spin it around 180 degrees and do the same thing to break the second half up into another quarters. And so I make another little groove, um, I dig this down probably 90% depth of the lens and I put the two instruments in there and I, I, I crack that half into two quarters. And once I get to this part and I've got the thing broken up into four kind of pieces of the pie almost. Then I grab onto uh, one of the, the four quadrants with the machine. This is where the vacuum comes into play. I And the, the vacuum holds onto that piece and it pulls it towards the center of the, the eye. And now I'm using the, the ultrasound to break that quadrant or that, that little piece of the pie up into a lot of little tiny pieces that the machine can pull out. So once I've done that, and I'm actually using that second little instrument to kind of also help to, to cut the bigger piece into little, little fragments that it'll take out. So you actually take it out in smaller pieces? Yeah, right so now you can that. see these little, little pieces being chewed up and sucked into that yeah. tip of that machine. You, you'll want, this one will show you a good example of that. And so once I do that, now I'll take and I'll do the same thing for all, all those quadrants. And so this is the second of the quadrants. I'm gonna, I'll kind of cut it like a little knife there with that second instrument and pull all the pieces out. You can get an idea of how small the instruments are with your fingers there. Yeah, and you can also tell that it takes very, very little movement of your actual hands to, to move the instruments a, a, a large amount inside the eye. My, it doesn't even look like my hands are really moving there. But and we, it, want, we want you to be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My hands aren't that steady anymore. I have a hard time moving things on the computer sometimes. 
And you should know that when we were at commercial, he said at this point, he still had not been feeling any pain. So right. all this that I'm doing there, is, there's no pain really. I mean, most people say that they don't, have never felt anything. And if they do, we make it go away. I mean, you shouldn't feel anything at all during cataract surgery. Yeah. I didn't even know anything. Let's, let's feel anything. Yeah, I would say probably half of my patients don't even know when I take them out to the recovery room, they don't realize that we've done anything to them. They ask me when we're going to start or if I'm ever going to come into the room and they just have been sleepy and yeah, which is kind of the way it should be. Well, I could hear voices. I could hear you talking with the crew and everything, uh, but I didn't feel anything. Yeah. I just, uh, I just knew that. But when I had my knee surgery, uh, when I woke up in the, in the room, I asked Janetta what time it was, and she told me, I says, well, I thought, and she said, it was like quarter to seven. And I said, well, I thought they were supposed to be here at six o'clock to take me out. <laughs> You'd been out and been back. <laughs> I'd been out and been back and had the surgery. Yeah. Of course, when I looked down at that leg and they had that machine on my knee moving as I knew. <laughs> now, what are those things moving? So there's little tiny pieces that I've been trying to pull out, the remaining pieces of the, the substance cataract. of the cataract. Now there's still just a little bit of material remaining. It's, we call it the cortex. It's kind of the shell that surrounds the, the main substance of the lens. And at this point, I put in another instrument that has no ultrasound energy. All this has is just fluid and um, vacuum. And so I grab onto these little pieces, these kind of feathery little pieces, and with this really high vacuum, and I strip it kind of towards the center, and it just tears off these little pieces, and I'll do that. So that's part of the, the, the looks this like feathers is part of the cataract. Part of the cataract, yeah. It's just the outside shell of the cataract. And you'll notice once, once I go all the way around the eye with this, that there will be essentially nothing left. That you'll just see just a bright orange reflex at this point. And that yeah. means that the entire cataract is gone. And what will still be remaining is just the, the thin capsule that's on the order of tenths or hundredths of a, a millimeter thick. That, that's what will, will hold the lens. Yeah, I, I, I look at my eye, eye there and I think it's pretty interesting that it's, it's not, it's not very much bloodshot either. Uh, yeah. Vacuum and water flow to try and pull off all yeah. the... Well, actually, the main reason that it's not bloodshot is because the drops that we use to dilate the pupil also constrict the blood vessels. Oh, okay. So that's a, a large part of why that happens. But not really anything that we do causes the eye to be bloodshot because we're, I mean, if you can see where my incision is there, it's through the clear part of the cornea. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no incision through any of the, the blood vessels. We don't actually touch blood vessels during the surgery. Occasionally, if we're doing some other extra little incisions, it'll bleed a little bit, but not like you're used to with regular surgery. I think you did a little extra on mine. Yeah, you for astigmatism. For, right. Yeah. And also mine wouldn't dilate. Yeah. At this point, we use another <laughs> instrument that uses... So now the entire cataract is gone at this point. And they're folding the lens up. They're doing what? Huh? They're folding the lens up. See, this is a this is that thick material that oh, I'd used earlier in the surgery. Right. Yeah. Right. This thick material keeps the eye nice and expanded. And now they're the lens actually comes kind of almost rolled up like a burrito. We want to get it in through the smallest incision possible because it does the least amount of trauma to the eye to, to make the incision small. So if we were to, to insert the lens open, it would be six millimeters wide, and we have to make a large incision. This injector actually has the lens rolled up inside of it, and so it will inject it rolled up, and then inside the eye, you'll notice it'll start to expand and open. It'll unfold. And this, by using this injector, it allows us to keep the incision small, which keeps us from having to sew the eye closed. Hmm. And now this thing, you can see the lens opening. Yeah. I'm actually using this instrument. It opens up, and it's got arms on, it's got two arms on it that will spring open. And as they spring open, the arms push against the wall of the eye and keep the lens centered. 
Oh. This is just, it's just amazing what they can do. And they do not sew that lens in, you said no, that? No, no. It just stays this, there. This lens, this is why at the very beginning of the surgery, I made a small hole in the, in the front part of the, the cataract in the capsule. And that hole is smaller than that lens, and so it keeps the lens from coming out of that capsule. And the lens stays perfectly centered on its own with those little arms that are in there. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove that thick fluid. That fluid is uh, too thick to leave in there. Your, the, eye, the drain to the eye would not clear that fluid very well on its own. It would make the pressure get really high after the surgery, which we know that some of this always stays in after the surgery and it causes the pressure to go up a little bit on the first day, but we try and remove the vast majority of it. That's one of the reasons you keep checking pressure. Exactly. You can actually see some of that thick fluid coming out. And then once I get all that thick fluid out, I'll use that tip to try and drag the lens right into the center of the pupil. And once you've got it there, it'll stay. Once I've got it there, it'll stay. Those arms on that, uh, that lens keep the lens very well centered. It's amazing. How big is that, about a pinhead? The, the tip? Yeah, the, the, the lens itself. Uh, the lens itself, six millimeters. Um, I'm trying to think, it just, what is six millimeters? So probably on the order of maybe a quarter of an inch, I would guess. Yeah, 20, yeah, it's about a quarter of an inch across. Yeah. And it helps us see so well. It helps you see very well. <laughs> now I'm closing the incisions. Now here, since we can do these very small incisions now, all I do is inject fluid into the wall of the cornea and you can see the cornea turn a little white and that is causing the, the, the cornea to swell a little bit and that seals the incision. Right there I just did it again. Now I'm pressing on the out, outer wall of the incision to make sure it doesn't open. Well, it looks like we're about through there then. I guess they go to roll me into the recovery room and then we're done. Yeah, so we're actually completely finished. I'm moving the scope away and taking that little speculum that holds the eye yep. open out. And there I am. Done. Now it's time for my Coke and cookies. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Dr. Taylor, we really appreciate you doing this and being able to show this to people and, and what might happen to them. Because uh, like you say, if they live long enough, they're going to have it done. Yeah. Thank so, you for having me. Yeah, so we, we appreciate you having done it, and we appreciate you watching our show today, and we want to encourage you and invite you to come back and watch all of our shows as we will try to show you and have for you things that are, are of major interest to you. So remember, it's the fabulous50s.net on the web, and Jeanette, give them our address. P.O. Box 7, Bose, Kentucky, 42027. Remember, use it or lose it. Can't see as well as I used to Can't run as far or as fast Sometimes I think that the old me Is becoming exactly that But when I start thinking of all I don't have That's when I tell